So why don't we start with the hair, since we're talking about it? Start with the hair. Yes. That's definitely the most interesting hair on the show <laughs> this season. What goes into it? Uh, a lot of hairspray. Uh -huh. Cans and cans of hairspray. Yeah. I go through a can of Tresemme a week. Tresemme. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I wore my hair straight for years until I was 21 years old. Uh -huh. And then I started just, I don't know, 21, you start partying, and then you're just like, ah! You want to, like, become this whole new person. So right. I started wearing, like, this, like, mohawk, and it was curly, and then straighten it. I felt completely liberated, and mm -hmm. I started straightening it and putting it up and just doing different things with it. So it but, I mean, this, I mean, some people might think that this takes two minutes to do. You just roll out of bed, and your hair's all over the place. But this probably takes a long time, right? Absolutely not. It takes about five minutes to do this. Really? I keep going like this because I, I just got back from rehearsal. And uh -huh. so, like... <laughs> It's not supposed to fall like that. Tresemme, you're not, working, you're not doing your job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're getting ready for uh, the Monday night live shows. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have my choreography down. The lyrics were tough at first. I have the lyrics down. It's a really wordy song that I'm singing. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to tell you what I'm singing? Uh, I think we're, we're going to keep that secret. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, I have some dancers. And it's my first time doing choreography, really, um, as an adult. I did ballet and tap as a child. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just did a rehearsal, and it went really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've actually been under the weather for the last three or four days. I missed the live shows because I, was, I couldn't get out of bed. Really? So I'm hoping that I will feel better by the time. Well, it's a good thing last week was your week off then, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we don't ever have weeks off, but... <laughs> well, if I'm performing on stage. Yeah. I mean, there's always something, you know, there's always some sort of, you know, iTunes or mm -hmm. um, interview, choreography, rehearsal, vocal coaching. Is it strange to have your songs on iTunes? Absolutely not. No, that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, what, what part of this is surreal for you? Uh, the surreal part is, um, you know, last night going on Leno, it became sort of like, oh my gosh, this is just otherworldly, like this is just so cool, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that you dream about doing and when it's actually happen happening to you, it just sort of sinks in, you know. Because mm -hmm. when we were watching the live shows a week ago, we were all sitting in the audience, we were like, is this real, you guys? And we couldn't like snap out of it and like get into it, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but last night in Leno it hit us and we were like, this is Jay Leno, this is real, you know, and I met Seal, he was, he's one of my idols. Mm -hmm. Um, the first album that I purchased as a teenager, um, being able to, being allowed to purchase music, um, uh, was his album with the Kiss from Rose song. Were your parents strict about purchasing music? Yes, absolutely. I wasn't allowed to listen to the radio growing up. <laughs> um, my parents were very conservative. Um, and, uh, I was very sheltered, so I, um, I listened to what they listened to, which was, you know, classical music on the radio, and they had, like, Billie Holiday, mm -hmm. Louis Armstrong, Simon Garfunkel playing, um, but that was the extent of my music growing up until I moved out of the house at 17 mm -hmm. and started, you know, buying my own stuff. What do you think about that, looking back on it? Uh, I think it's... I think it keeps me young now mm -hmm. because I didn't really get to experience the things like I didn't party, I didn't sneak out of the house or anything like that. So like I didn't like now as being 28, mm -hmm. um, I still I'm still like a kid at heart, you know, because mm -hmm. I I don't know I don't know how that works out, but I, I still feel very young. I feel like I'm a young. Well, you are young. Yeah. You know, too young to have a teenager, of course. But if you had a teenager, or teenager Absolutely in your not. life, would, would you want that teenager listening to the radio now? Jeez, they could listen Watching to Watching MTV? Music. They could listen to, no, I don't, no, I mean, when it, back when it was MTV music videos, sure, mm -hmm. but you know, like all the reality TV shows and stuff, I mean, I don't have anything against reality TV shows, but I want, you know, I want my kids to watch uh, healthy programming, and mm -hmm. I grew up watching PBS and... WTW and... <laughs>
<laughs> Sounds like an interesting, interesting teenage experience. What was high school like? Uh, high school was cool. See, the thing is, I was really, I was sheltered because I was very sick growing up. Um, I had, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis when I was 10 years old. And then I shit blood for four years until I had my large intestine removed, which was a decision, that, an adult decision that I had to make as a teenager. Wow. Um, so it was a 12-hour surgery, a uh, quarter of a million dollars later. I have no large intestine. And I, <clears throat> right before my surgery, I did an exchange program in Japan. I was on prednisone. I've been on prednisone for like three years. And uh, because that was in a wheelchair for... Um, six months because they didn't want to soften my bones and all that. Um, so then when I got back from Japan, I had my surgery and then I had a J pouch. I had an ostomy pouch for a whole summer, the summer between my middle school and high school years. And they took that down, reconstructed it. And now I live without a large intestine and, um, ulcerative colitis, the only real cure is having a colectomy. Mm -hmm. Um, but you do suffer from symptoms continually, continually throughout your life. So what is it in layman's terms? Uh, it's the the lining of your large intestines is riddled with thousands of ulcers, mm -hmm. and it bleeds, um, and it eats through the lining of your intestine, leading to um, toxic megacolon or um, septic shock. Sounds like you could die from that. Absolutely. I I was on the edge of death. I've had numerous blood transfusions. I've had more surgeries than I can count. It's a blessing that I'm here today. Was it because they caught it on time? Um, no, it's because, um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things you, where you can decide to just take out the parts that are bad mm -hmm. and have them re-piece together, or you can just ha have the whole thing taken out. Like, I got lucky with ulcerative colitis. Some people have mm -hmm. Crohn's disease, which affects your entire digestive system. Right. Ulcerative colitis is just your large intestine. So um, because of that, I mean, I consider myself lucky. How did you pay the $250,000? Children's Special Health Services out of Michigan. It's a, it's a wonderful organization that, uh, that helps families you know, with transportation, medical, medical bills, places to stay, things like that. So I, it sounds like you got a little, little giving back to do to them Absolutely. as you become a star? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, the, it's one of my biggest... Um, uh, aspirations to create a uh, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation um, that sort of encompasses all of the things that help my family get through what I went through financially, emotionally, you know, um, psychologically. Um, I want to create a foundation like that for families sure. with kids who are going through that and adults because. You know, there's really no way to transition from children's special health services into adulthood. Mm -hmm. There's no insurance program for people who don't have a large intestine. So I haven't seen a doctor in over 10 years. And I, I could be living with cancer right now, and I don't know it. So, why? Why? You just can't afford to see a doctor? Well, it's, it's, I have a gastroenterologist. He's a specialist, and specialists aren't cheap. And I don't have money for insurance. Right. So. Um, yeah. Not just pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story behind the voice. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. it's quite a story. You've overcome a lot. I have. I find, I, I, I consider myself, I mean, I don't feel like weaker or mm -hmm. anything because that happened to me. It makes me much stronger. Yeah, I think absolutely. that's why I come across as stronger because it, uh, you know, it's, I know what life is, and I know I'm here. It probably gives you a much better appreciation for life and the things you do have, too. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, they're giving us the hook, so we have to wrap it up. But I want to wish you the best of luck on the show. Thank you. And we'll be following your journey. All right, thank you so much. All right, you got it.